Born in Odessa in the Russian Empire, now the Ukraine, Morris Lapidus' Jewish family had to flee Russia during the pogroms and went to New York City when he was just two years old. In New York, he was fascinated by the shapes and designs of Coney Island, a place where he would draw inspiration years later. His interest in theater, set design, um, that was kind of his early design work, was actually in, in those areas. Um, but what I don't think we fully appreciated was his actual original desire, which was to be an actor. As a young man, Lapidus explored acting, which led to his interest in theatrical set design, where he was directed by scene painters to study architecture. He attended Columbia University, graduating in 1927. From 1929 to 1943, he worked with Ross Frankel as a retail architect, where he changed the face of shopping. It's very clear that Morris Lapidus understood shopping, not in the sense of just walking into a store as if you, if you study retail, Back in the 20s, you walked into a store, you walked to a counter, they pulled a few things out, you looked at it and you were done. You bought whatever it is you needed on the, count, on the countertop. What's being brought to us now, and I think Morris Lapidus brought this, is certainly an innovator on this, who, who brought us that fact that you're in an entire space. And I understand that he designed not only just the store itself, but everything that was in the store. Every product was placed on something designed by Morris Lapidus. I think it's a true sense of um, the word drama that we keep using, that there was, there's a sense of drama, there's a sense of excitement, there's movement, there's, uh, I think you could delineate um, all levels of theater in this, with dance to the acting, there's emotion. And I think it hits on every sense uh, of the imagination when you're walking through the space. After his very successful 22-year career in retail interior design with Ross Frankel, Lapidus was asked to be a hotel doctor on several Miami hotels. He soon was the associate architect of five hotel projects in Miami Beach. The San Suji Hotel in 1947, opened in 1949, the Delito Hotel, the Biltmore Terrace, and the Algiers, all along Collins Avenue and amounting to the single-handed redesign of the entire district. The hotels were an immediate popular success and Lapidus began to push the boundaries of the hotel experience further. Then, in 1952, he landed the job of the largest luxury hotel in Miami Beach, the property he is most associated with, the Fountain Blue, and perhaps the most famous hotel in the world. Lapidus' success had a detrimental effect on Lincoln Road. In the 1920s, Carl Fisher came to Lincoln Road and built a wide esplanade so that all of his friends could come to Miami Beach and shop. It was from beach to bay. He brought in some of the most outrageous shops and some of the most outrageous storefronts and brought down the most outrageous party. There were theaters, there were cafes, there were shops. By 1959, with the opening of the major resort hotels, the Fountain Blow and the Eden Rock, both by Morris Lapidus, Lincoln Road Shopping Center fell into decline. The shop owners on Lincoln Road got together and asked Mr. Lapidus if he'd be willing to help them find a solution so that they could garner some of the business for themselves. 